Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police say the only shooting taking place outside of a northwest side barbershop should have been with a camera. Instead, someone used a gun to take aim at a crowd who had gathered there for a music video. Police say five people were either wounded or grazed by the gunfire overnight on Wurzbach Road near Ingram Road. As Katrina Weber reports, police hope surveillance video will show them who the shooter was. Music is what drew people in the middle of the night to this parking lot near Freshhead's Barbershop. But San Antonio police say gunfire shortly after 2 a.m. is what caused most to scatter. Officers found those who were left behind in the 3300 block of Wurzbach Road, most of whom were suffering from injuries or wounds related to the shooting. Police say three men were shot and taken to a hospital. Two others had been grazed by bullets. They say the crowd was there for the filming of a music video when the real life drama happened. With those gunshots, police say what had been a music video scene became a crime scene. You can still see signs of it here in the shattered window and giant bullet hole. Police are calling this the result of a drive by shooting. They say someone in a sedan rolled up and began firing. At this point, investigators still don't know why, but they hope surveillance video might tell them who did it, who turned a video shoot into a shooting. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, San Antonio police are hoping someone has clues that will help them solve a murder case. The investigation started back on March 22nd in the 14,500 block of Quisenberry Road. Officers say that night witnesses found a victim on the side of the road. First responders pronounced Ruben Rodriguez dead at the scene. Police say someone shot him several times. However, police don't know why, and they're still trying to find the suspect who pulled the trigger. If you can help officers with this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. This noon, we're learning a security officer was hurt by one of their own bullets during a struggle with a suspect. Police say it happened at Haven for Hope, just northwest of downtown. Police say a man was denied access to the building and then began beating on the doors of the building around 10 p.m. last night. Two security officers trying to rest restrain him. That's when the suspect was able to take a gun from one of the security officers and shoot them. The other security officer then fired multiple rounds in an attempt to stop the person. The suspect was hit, but so was the officer when a bullet ricocheted off the ground. All were taken to the hospital and should be okay. And on the southeast side, San Antonio police are investigating a different shooting. It happened around 2.30 this morning in the 2900 block of Anza Street near I-35 and Pecan Valley Drive. Police say the victim told them he was walking home when someone took a shot at him. Officers later discovered a trail of shell casings leading back to a courtyard at this apartment complex. Police say the 41-year-old victim was taken to the hospital with three gunshot wounds, one in each arm and one in the foot. The victim was not able to tell police anything about the person who shot him. Now to a developing story out of Russia, where officials say American Trevor Reed has been released from prison. The former Marine from Texas had been detained there since 2019, but his family tells ABC he is now on a flight back to the U.S. after two countries held a prisoner exchange. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Former Marine Trevor Reed is now a free man heading back to the U.S. after spending nearly three years in a Russian prison on what U.S. officials long described as bogus charges. The U.S. and Russia coming to a surprise deal in a time of heightened tension. Talks for this swap ongoing for months and intensified in recent weeks amid concerns over Reed's health. U.S. officials agreeing to hand over a convicted Russian drug trafficker, Konstantin Yeroshenko, who was serving a 20-year federal prison sentence in exchange for Reed. The 30-year-old was arrested in 2019. Russian authorities claiming he assaulted a police officer. Reed was later sentenced to nine years in prison, the U.S. government calling his detainment unjust, his family maintaining his innocence, his parents speaking with CNN after his release. He sounds kind of subdued. I think he's a a little overwhelmed. Um, yeah, he seemed to be in shock a little bit. We're just glad that obviously he's on his way home, but they also have a doctor on the plane. So he's getting checked out, and that was our main concern. Trevor telling his father the prisoner exchange happened on the tarmac in Turkey. Trevor quickly told us that they... The American plane pulled up next to the Russian plane and they walked both prisoners across at the same time like you see in the movies. 
The Reid family thanking the Biden administration. The president called them as they were talking to Trevor to tell them he'd been freed. Biden saying he's celebrating Reid's return, adding the negotiations that allowed us to bring Trevor home required difficult decisions that I do not take lightly. Reed was one of several Americans detained by Russia. WNBA star Brittany Griner has been in prison since February for allegedly having hashish oil in her bag. And American tourist Paul Whelan has been in Russian custody since 2018 after being arrested on espionage charges. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Today, lawmakers and loved ones came together to honor former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. Her funeral taking place at the Washington National Cathedral, President Joe Biden gave the eulogy. Other speakers include former presidents Bill Clinton and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Albright served as Secretary of State in the Clinton administration. She was the first woman to hold that position. Albright's family says she died after a battle with cancer. She was 84 years old. After some much needed rain at the beginning of this week, we're actually going to start a warming trend feeling a lot more like summer before the weekend. I've got a look at that forecast coming up. Also coming up in a few minutes, MacArthur softball team has won district. Now they're hoping that that will give them enough momentum to go into a deep playoff run. Lara Mirrors with more from the young ladies coming up in sports. A unique San Antonio experience is back, allowing folks to see the sights at the Riverwalk and grab a bite to eat. We'll take a look after the break. After a hiatus because of the pandemic, you can once again drift and dine on the San Antonio Riverwalk. That sounds pretty good. The program allows families to try some of San Antonio's most delicious and creative culinary masterpieces while exploring the Riverwalk on a floating barge. Ooh, looks pretty good, too. Max Masti shows us what it entails and what it means for the Alamo City. The Drift and Dine is back. It's seemingly better than ever. Take a look. All right, so Chef Andres, what are we looking at here? Where are you from? So, Ostra, Mogada Hotel and Spa. So we have a, here is a tuna, tartar tacos, cilantro, aioli, some greens, watermelon, radish. Moving down the line, Chef Mendoza, where are you from? What are we looking at? It looks good. So we're from Paisano's Riverwalk. Uh, today we have a mini beef wellington with a truffle brie mashed potato red wine demi glaze, and of course our staple shrimp paisano with lemon butter garlic sauce. Lemon butter garlic sauce, and of course, last but certainly not least, Chef Santiago, where are you from? What are we looking at? Good morning. Uh, yeah, we're coming from uh, Zoka Restaurant. Uh, come and join us on Thursday. Uh, we have some jumbo seared scallops here with uh, wild mushroom uh, truffle risotto uh, with some squid ink crisps. Um, yeah. Wow. It looks amazing. So five different restaurants each night. What an assortment. Joined here with Edward. What does this mean for you guys here at the Riverwalk, having people back? Uh, you know, it means it means a lot to us to be able to showcase our culinary talents over at uh, Ostra and the Mokaro Hotel and Spa, and also to be affiliated with the rest of these great restaurants down on the river. All right, Edward, thank you so much. Guys, we know hospitality tourism is so important for the economy of San Antonio. So if you're interested, we're going to have all this information. Just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. David, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry now for seeing all that food. Dang. I want to watch uh, Cat Max take that barge down the river. See what <laughs> see what happens there. I've got a little behind the scenes information. You ready for this? Okay. So that that sailor hat uh -huh. that was also his uh, Halloween costume. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Not surprised. A little <laughs> little wimpy for a Halloween costume, in my opinion. Wow. All right. Hey, the aquifer continuing to enjoy the rain we saw at the beginning of the week. It's up four tenths of a foot but it's gonna take a lot more rain to get us out of those stage two water restrictions, unfortunately. Look at this pollen count. David was saying this is migraine level mold. All right, mold is very high, past 11,000. Oak is also up there, high at 600. Pecan, grass, and pine, all on the lower side of things. But again, that, that mold is very high from the rain we saw uh, over the last couple of days. Now today, clouds at times. We're seeing some breaks in the clouds too. It'll be humid, windy, and warmer tomorrow and Friday. And we're gonna talk about over the weekend how there's a potential for an isolated storm or two. I'll tell you what you need to know coming up in a bit. A 
I don't like to be the negative guy after all that great rain we had, but you know, it is kind of moldy out there, which for some people, headaches come right with the <laughs> I don't know if your migraine is from the mold or is it because I just talked to you too much on commercial breaks. I think, I think it's a contributing factor here. I'm just going with the mold. Yeah. I'm not touching that. Come on, don't even set me up like that. All right, Lee, let's wow. go with the mold. All right. Wow. Uh, but yeah, David, you're exactly right. So, <laughs> woo. All right, here yeah. we go. Weather. Okay, you're exactly right, David, because the, right. the, the storms and the showers that we saw Monday and Tuesday, uh -huh. that has made the mold go up. Yeah. So we need the rain, though, so we're not necessarily complaining. Take a look outside at the airport right now. You can see there's plenty of peaks of sunshine through those clouds and we've been dealing with on and off again cloud cover this morning. We started off fairly clear skies in many areas, but those clouds have uh, moved back in. It's 76 degrees winds from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. I'll show you what I mean uh, about how the clouds have uh, come and go gone. Take a look outside with the satellite imagery from early this morning, right at around sunrise. Most of San Antonio was seeing clear skies, but as we uh, we've had it throughout the day. We've been seeing those clouds build back in. We've got mostly cloudy skies right now and temperatures are starting to warm up. It's 76 degrees at the airport, 75 in Converse, 80 at Stinson. Temperatures already warmer out there than the warmest we got yesterday. So a little bit of sun is allowing for the, the thermometer to rise up there pretty well. It's 78 in Hondo, it's 70 in Bernie and 73 in Comfort. I'm going to show you a wider view here because it's still fairly cloudy cloudy for our western communities and temperatures are much cooler out west in Del Rio it's 70 right now. That's a pretty big temperature difference all because we've seen a little bit of sun. They've been socked in cloud cover and those winds have started to pick up too. winds are breezy from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. Why is this important? Because it's increasing that Gulf of Mexico humidity and we're going to see high humidity through the coming days and so we'll be dealing with a bit of a heat index value. But in your case at 12 hour forecast, here's what you can expect for the remainder of the day. Mostly cloudy skies, times of sun, times of clouds, and temperatures will be climbing to near 80 degrees this afternoon. You'll notice that I did put a 10% chance for a stray streamer shower out there today. It is not a good chance for rain, but as you're heading home from the evening commute, you may end up having to turn on those windshield wipers once or twice just briefly because of a stray streamer shower. Otherwise, 80 degrees for the high temperature. Southeast winds today, 5 to 15 miles per hour. After the sun sets at 8, it's going to be a pretty mild evening for us. Temperatures will only be down into the 70s. You know, this morning we started off in the 50s. We're not going to get that cool for a while, so uh, it's going to be more of a mild evening. Satellite and radar, it's fairly quiet across the U.S. The one exception is a little bit of activity across New England. We've got a high pressure system right over the Mississippi, and air moves in a clockwise fashion around a high pressure system, and that's why we're pulling in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. That's why winds are picking up. And if you think it's breezy out there right now, wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be windy. We'll be seeing wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour from the south. And it's going to be substantially warmer too for your Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, the high temperature will be closer to uh, 90 degrees after morning clouds. And even warmer on Friday, well, morning clouds, afternoon sun, 90 for the high on Friday. And it'll feel a lot warmer than that because of the heat index because of the high humidity. Then I mentioned before the break that we'll be watching over the weekend for an isolated storm or two. A cold front is going to stall across North Texas and it's likely going to bring North Texas and Central Texas some showers and storms. One or two of those may try to make a run for San Antonio in the metro area. So is it going to rain? for everyone over the weekend? No, in fact, there's a good chance that it won't rain for everyone over the weekend, but one or two storms may develop Saturday, Sunday, and even into Monday. And because of the nature of the atmosphere, if those one or two storms develop, they could be on the stronger side. So we're going to keep an eye on things for you. Just know that gradually we're going to be seeing that warm up through Friday. It'll be near 90 over the weekend too, with an off chance for an isolated storm or two. Again, we got good rain on, on Monday and uh, for parts of the area on Tuesday morning, but we really need more soaking rainfall. Uh, coming up though, that rain was enough to need to make some people mow the lawn. So 
I've got your oh. lawn mowing forecast Ooh. coming up in a bit. Already? Definitely. Yep. Oh. Thanks, Sarah. All right. I know we say this every year, but the Cowboys and the, especially the Texans mm -hmm. can really help themselves with this year's draft, can't they? Yeah, and the Cowboys have the 24th overall mm -hmm. selection in the first round. They definitely need some offensive line help. They need some defensive line help. But when it really comes down to it, who makes the call when it comes to the draft picks, Jerry or Steven? And the Houston Texans need a lot of help. Will they draft the quarterback? We got it coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The 2022 NFL Draft starts tomorrow night in Las Vegas. The Dallas Cowboys have nine picks, including the 24th overall in the first round. And the boys have needs on both sides of the ball with the departure of Connor Williams and Lyle Collins on the offensive side and Randy Gregory on the defensive line. Most are expecting the Cowboys to use their first round selection to pick an offensive lineman. But when it comes down to it, who has the final say in the Cowboys war room? Here's Jerry Jones. There's a lot of talk in this business about who makes the call, who actually makes the call, okay? Uh, Taco was Steven's call. <laughs> Parson, Parson, Parson is my call. I don't, that's not that funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry, take it easy on Steven, man. For the Houston Texans, head coach Levy Smith met with the media yesterday to talk draft. They clarified their trade with the Patriots for picks. Houston sent its sixth round pick, number 183 overall, and a seventh rounder, number 245, originally from the Cowboys, to the Pats in exchange for a fifth round pick, number 170 overall. That leaves Houston with 10 picks in this year's draft. Smith was asked how important is it to him to add another quarterback. Some teams have four. I think once you get, you have three quarterbacks on your roster, you should feel uh, pretty good about that, and we do. Um, we keep all options open, but uh, we feel good about our quarterback room right now. Leading off with Davis Mills. I've talked about him and my feeling, our feeling about who our leader would be. NFL Draft kicks off at 7 tomorrow night and live right here on KSAT 12. So here's four local draft prospects in this year's NFL Draft. All four went to area high schools to Marvin Leounce and Sear McCormick from Judson, JT Woods out of Steel, and Spencer Burford from Wagner. Good luck to those four and other draft prospects from UTSA and Incarnate Word as they chase their NFL dreams. This afternoon, the UIL softball playoffs begin, and MacArthur is looking to make a deeper run than last season. In 2021, they finished with a 15-1 record and won the District 28-6A title, only to lose in a best-of-three series to East Central in the by district round. This year, they went 16-0 in district play to secure back-to-back -back titles, and they feel confident heading into the playoffs thanks to an offense that has outscored district opponents by a combined margin of 161 to 9. I just really love our offense. All the girls work so hard each and every day and we're ready. We're ready to go. We all are nervous, anxious for the game, but it's all excitement. We're all happy. MacArthur will face Clemens in game one of a best of three by district round series tonight at seven at NEISD softball field. Second annual Bryce Strong blood drive was held yesterday at Judson High School where Bryce Wisdom went to school before cancer claimed his life in July 2020. At least 450 donors were on hand, including new Rockets head coach Mark Soto. This is amazing and it's really overwhelming. I walked in and I thought I was going to be OK, but you see people coming out again for the second year in a row and all I could do was cry. I'm just so appreciative and so grateful because I don't think people really truly understand what it is that they're doing when they're giving blood and how they're helping others by doing something that's just so easy. I love Mama Wisdom yep. and I don't know how she remains so strong. But that tells you what kind of impact he and that family had on that community out there. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. Incredible. Thanks, Larry. Well, South Texas is gearing up for a hot summer. Hollywood is hoping things will heat up at the box office as well. A look at some of the major releases coming to theaters in May coming up in the next half hour. But before we get to summer, we have to deal with those spring allergies and they may hit some folks harder than others. We'll take a look at why after the break. New today at five. It's a tour that seems to never go away. It's also costly. We're talking about laundry. You'll turn and the basket is full yet again. 12 on your signs. Marilyn Moritz has a few simple eco-friendly changes that can help lower your energy bill today at five after entertainment tonight.
More than 120,000 pounds of ground beef products are being recalled because there are concerns that could be contaminated with E. coli. The beef was carried by brands including Thomas Farms, Nature's Reserve, and Marketside Butcher and manufactured between February 1st and April 8th. E. coli can cause serious stomach problems. For details on the recall, you'll find everything you need to know on the USDA's website. It's allergy season, and a recent study shows it's getting longer and hitting people harder. ABC's Becky Worley explains what's behind the shift and what you can do about minimizing your allergies. Spring is in the air, and that means allergies. <laughs> this is a hard time for us. The culprit is this stuff, pollen. For Juliana Paldino and the 60 million other Americans who suffer from seasonal allergies, this is absolutely terrible and I hate it. Juliana says her allergies came on with a vengeance this spring. Not only do I have redness from blowing my nose from allergies, but I never used to get sinus headaches, but I have had horrible headaches. It's lasting longer, more intense releases of pollen, and that's causing worse allergies. One culprit is climate change. More CO2 increases the fuel for plants and trees producing pollen. Hotter temperatures make the pollen releases more intense. And late fall freezes mean the allergy season lasts longer. But allergist Dr. Anjali Mehrotra says you can fight back. Over the counter to treatments, more specialty medications like nasal sprays and allergy eye drops. And then at the doctor's office, we have more specialty treatments like allergen immunotherapy, where you get allergy shots and desensitized to allergies. Dr. Mayrocha also says to start taking allergy medications before the season starts. For example, ragweed season is late summer, so if that's your trigger, talk to your doctor about starting meds midsummer. Another tip, a high filtration mask can keep exposure down. Make sure you're not getting uh, more prolonged exposure to that particular allergen. Finally, keep pollen out of the house. Take off your shoes and jackets when you come in and keep windows and doors closed. If you've taken the dog for a walk, wipe it down outside the house with a wet towel. The shoes and the wiping the dog down or your cat down are very important because you don't really think about all that yellow stuff mm -hmm. all over everywhere and you track it into your house. And see, our problem is that it's, we pretty much have allergies year round yeah. because of mountain cedar, because mountain yeah. cedar pollinates in the winter. So, you know, we're used to it, guys. It's mold is the highest thing though out there right now. I'll show you the pollen count coming up in, in a bit. But first I wanted to talk about a rare sight early this morning over the city of San Antonio. We had the clouds clear just in time to see Venus right there, Jupiter, and the moon. It was really neat out there. Uh, now, tomorrow morning, we are going to have clouds, so it's going to be difficult to see anything in the sky tomorrow morning, but a really cool thing there. Outside right now, some clouds have returned, and it's 76 degrees. Winds are from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. For the rest of the day today, we're going to see temperatures warm up pretty significantly. We should be near 82 degrees this afternoon, so it is going to be warm. Sunsets at 808 and it'll be a mild evening with temperatures falling in the 70s. So we have seen some rain. You might want to know when can you mow today? Fair conditions because there are still some damp spots out there. Thursday, Friday and Saturday, though, we really don't anticipate uh, rain during the day, and so it should be good to mow Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Saturday, however, there is a chance for storms later in the day. It's not great, but the chance is there. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about that. And of course, I'll have a look at that pollen count that we just mentioned in just a few minutes. David. Thank you, Sarah. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy is facing blowback from fellow Republicans who say he needs to explain what he said on newly revealed audio tape from the days after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. In a phone call with other Republican leaders just four days after the attack on the Capitol, McCarthy expresses deep concern about the possibility of more violence. McCarthy wants to become Speaker of the House if the Republicans win the House back in November. He says controversy from the released audio won't hurt his chances. Meanwhile, Republican Congressman Matt Gates has criticized McCarthy, saying, quote, this is the behavior of weak men, not leaders, end quote. Now to the war in Ukraine. Russia escalating the conflict overseas by cutting NATO members Poland and Bulgaria 
off from its gas. And Russia is taking it a step further, saying they could halt gas supplies to other European customers. On the ground, the Russian military claimed today that its miss missiles hit a batch of weapons that the U.S. and European nations delivered to Ukraine. This comes one day after the United States and other Western allies vowed to speed more and better military supplies to Ukraine. Meanwhile, there is growing concern that the war could spill over Ukraine's borders. On Tuesday, explosions rocked Moldova, knocking out two powerful radio antennas. And a Russian missile hit a strategic railroad bridge linking Ukraine's Odessa port region to neighboring Romania. Back here in the U.S., an investment company is warning that a recession could be coming, due in part to high inflation. Deutsche Bank economists wrote in a report that the central bank will aggressively raise interest rates, in turn hurting the economy. Consumer prices also spiked at 8.5 percent in March, the fastest rise in 40 years. However, the bank does see the economy rebounding by mid-2024. Deutsche Bank said the most important factor, other financial institutions like Goldman Sachs say a recession is not inevitable. We'll take a look at this. Four astronauts are heading to the International Space Station. Today's SpaceX launch sent them on their way in a Crew Dragon capsule. One of the astronauts, Jessica Watkins, is now the first black woman to go on a long-duration space mission. The launch sees SpaceX returning to its partnership with NASA after a private mission Monday. Still coming up this half hour, a former local high school star ready to make her mark in the WNBA. Lyra Mirrors with more coming up in a few minutes in sports. Those summer temperatures will roll in soon. Also heating up the box office. A look at some of the blockbusters expected to drop starting next month after the break. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. 19 of the biggest and most profitable companies in the U.S. paid little to no federal income tax last year. That, according to a new report, the Center for American Progress says loopholes and tax breaks gave AT&T, Dow, AIG, and 14 other companies an effective tax rate of less than 10 percent. That's since former President Trump's 2017 tax reforms. Meanwhile, Delta Airlines says they're going to start paying their flight attendants wages during the boarding process. That makes Delta the first U.S. airline to do so. Flight attendants typically are only paid from the time that the plane's doors close. Delta also attempting to fight off unionization as they're the last major U.S. airline that's not unionized. And Warner Music is now launching a podcast network with stars Lapita Nyong'o and Jason Derulo signed on. The company's Interval Presents Network says they plan to publish podcasts covering topics from pop culture to social impact. Nyong'o is set to host a nonfiction series exploring the African diaspora and Derulo is going to host a musical. And that's Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The month of May means the start of summer movie season. Yeah, and, the, and Hollywood is preparing to release a quartet of major movies and uh, shows. CNN's Rick Damagella has more. What do you know about the multiverse? Viz had his theories. He believed it was dangerous. He was right. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is the next chapter in phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Following the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, the second Doctor Strange flick finds Steven casting a spell he probably shouldn't have. The Multiverse opens May 6th. If you ever start to lose control, what do you do? It didn't work. She's not a robot, Annie, she's a little girl with little girl emotions, which are wildly unpredictable. An updated spin on Stephen King's Firestarter hits theaters and a simultaneous premiere on Peacock on May 13th. The new take on the flammable thriller stars Zac Efron and Ryan Kira Armstrong. A start at the beginning. Years ago, before you were born, I met a man. They spend a few days together and he gives her a house. What secrets does the Dowager Countess have? One thing is clear, Downton Abbey, a new era, won't be limited to the English countryside. Grab your tea and whatever Mrs. Patmore has whipped up as the new era arrives in theaters May 20th. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. 
This is your captain speaking. Tom Cruise is back in the pilot seat in Top Gun Maverick. The long-awaited sequel reunites Cruise with Oblivion director Joseph Kaczynski. Moviegoers can feel the need, the need for speed, when Maverick swoops into theaters Memorial Day weekend. Getting the popcorn ready in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. How long have we been waiting on Maverick to show up? It's been like two hours or something, time. right? Yes. Man. Long well, right. time. Looking forward to that one. Yep. Uh, you know, taking a look outside, we've got some peaks of sunshine, and the sun mixed with the fact that we had some rain Monday and Tuesday has made molds go very high, past 11,000. Oak is out there too. It's still oak season. It's at 600, so it's high. Pecan, grass, and pine are low. All right, showing you the aquifer since January 1st. Obviously, the spring has been very bad for us. We've been, we're in stage two water restrictions, but look at the very end there. You can see a little uptick in the aquifer from the rain we saw earlier this week. It has gone up a little bit, but we're going to need a lot more rain to recover that aquifer level. We don't have a great chance for rain in the forecast over the next seven days, but I'll talk about isolated storms possible over the weekend. Rain is good. Rain is a good thing. Mold no, is not. It's not. No, uh, hopefully the mold will get out of here at some point. But we want more of the rain. We could use a lot more rain. But please. wait, wait, hold on. You, and you got your, like, gauge on mowing? On who's got to mow their grass? Is that what oh, that yeah. was? Oh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Already? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sarah Costa was talking to me this morning, and her grass grew, and she needs to mow it, so. Wow. There you go. Hey, but like you said, Lee, you know, we could use a lot more rain. I want to show you here uh, the rainfall that's been measured so far this month. An inch and a quarter almost since April 1st. But here's the thing. That's still about an inch of rain deficit from what we should have in the rain bank by now for this month. And when you compare it to the year, it's even uh, more pronounced how much rain we need. Since January 1st, we've seen a little bit more than three and a half inches of rain, but that is more than four and a half inches of rain less than what we should have. So again, we could use the rain and as far as rain chances go, isolated uh, over the weekend but we'll get to that outside right now. Just know that we're dealing with the periods of sunshine and clouds at 76 degrees. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at the satellite and the temperatures. A lot more cloud cover out to the west of San Antonio. Overcast skies for areas like Del Rio, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs. As we zoom into Bear County and the San Antonio metro area, many of us started with sunshine, but those clouds have returned. It's now mostly cloudy, 77 New Braunfels, 75 in Converse, 80 at Stinson, 82 in Devine, 77 in Rio Medina, and 72 in Bandera. We are going to be able to see temperatures warm up by a few more degrees in generally close to 80 around San Antonio with highs in the uh, mid 70s up in the hill country. That's fairly average for the day. Our average high 82 this time of year. Our forecast high today around 81, 82 degrees. All right, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. This afternoon, we're going to be warming up into the low 80s. Notice that I did put a 10% chance for a stray shower, uh, and that's all it would be a very small shower in very, very isolated locations. Otherwise, most of us are not going to see any rain today. Southeast winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour this evening after the sun sets. It's going to get mild temperatures will be in the 70s, not as cool as it was yesterday in the evening. And this morning we got down into the 50s. We're not going to be able to see temperatures get that low tomorrow morning. Okay, looking at the satellite radar across the nation, fairly quiet. We've got a high pressure system to our east. Air moves in a clockwise fashion around a high pressure system. That's a science fact for the day. And so that's why we're seeing those winds from the south pulling in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. And tomorrow, it's going to be a lot windier than today. Here's a look at the wind gusts forecast for tomorrow because of that high pressure system. And we're going to be seeing winds gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour tomorrow. So it will be windy uh, tomorrow and it will be warm near 87 degrees by Friday 90 for the high temperature. So even hotter on Friday. So warming up quite a bit tomorrow and on Friday. And then I mentioned there's a chance for isolated rain over the weekend. A front is going to stall out over North Texas and it's going to fire off a few thunderstorms. One or two of those storms may have enough oomph to make it to the metro area. 
And so our, our chance for rain over the weekend is not great, only 20%. But if we do get a storm, it could become stronger, severe just because of the nature of these springtime storms. So I know it looks like maybe, you know, you might want to cancel plans with that chance for an isolated shower storm. Don't just keep the case out weather authority app handy. We'll continue to keep you updated as we get closer to the weekend too. most immediate thing to know about the future is that it's going to be windy on Thursday and Friday. So plan accordingly and it's going to be a lot warmer too. You're not going to need the jacket tomorrow in the morning or in the afternoon. It's going to be a warm one for us over the next couple of days. Lee, David. All right, Sarah, thank you. All right, Lee, I want you to write this name down. Okay. The Marvin Leal. And okay. when you start watching the NFL on Sundays. What's the last name? L-E-A-L. -L, yep. Leal. Okay. You start watching the NFL on Sundays, chances are yeah. you're going to see him, right? Yep, a Judson Rocket grade. Yep. And if he he's going to get drafted, so he's going to join a handful of other Judson Rockets currently in the NFL. I mean, Judson just knows how to produce NFL talent. Coming up, DeMarvin Leal. Thanks to the name, image, and likeness agreement in the NCAA, has a sandwich named the Big Ocho right after him. Plus, Tariq Woolen has a cool story out of UTSA talking about how a FedEx driver helped train him to get him ready for the draft coming up. WNBA rookie Nalissa Smith is having a blast at training camp in Big Board Sports. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. First round, the NFL draft starts tomorrow night in Las Vegas, and Jets and high school great DeMarvin Leal is expected to be one of the top draft picks. He joins fellow area football stars Sincere McCormick, Spencer Burford, and JT Woods, who all attended area high schools. Now, several mock drafts have Leal going anywhere from late in the first round to the second and or third round. Thanks to the name, image, and likeness deals that allow college student athletes to make money, Leal struck up a sandwich deal in College Station. Here's a vignette ESPN shared with ABC stations. I'm Big Ocho, so it gotta be the name of a big sandwich, you know? I got the Big Ocho sandwiches at Brookshire Brothers in College Station, Texas. It started off with ham, turkey, lettuce, tomatoes, with bacon on it with pepper jack cheese and American cheese as well. I recommend personally that you put mayo on. I did have a few coaches try the Big Ocho. They all say they love it. The Big Ocho, coming to a shop near you. The Big Ocho looks great, doesn't it? UTSA cornerback Tariq Woolen, who put on a show in the 40-yard dash at the NFL Scouting Combine, is also part of this year's draft class. He's tall at 6'4", and he's fast, running the 40 in 4.26 seconds, second fastest among corners at the Combine. Here's his draft vignette, talking about a FedEx driver that helped to get him ready to where he is today. 2020, COVID had happened, and we didn't get to meet with our coaches until the summertime. So in the meantime, I met a FedEx delivery guy named Tyler M. Pierce. He used to play indoor football, and he reached out to me on Instagram about training. And I never had a trainer in my life, so it was just pretty cool. Uh, the work I put in, it helped me, because when the summertime came and I got to be with my coaches, they seen that I made improvements. I'm glad I put this work in. It starts right here, because this. Uh, I didn't care about him being a FedEx driver. I just seen that he used to play football, and that's all I needed to hear. He didn't care about getting paid. He just wanted to see me uh, succeed and reach my goals. And it's pretty crazy, because two years later, that's what's actually happening. That is a great story. Now, East Central High School's very own Alyssa Smith is getting ready for her first WNBA game this Saturday when the Indiana Fever hosted Chicago Sky in a preseason contest. A little over two weeks ago, the Indiana Fever selected her second overall in the WNBA draft. Smith, one of Indiana's four first-round picks, was asked what she's working on as she preps for her very first game. Uh, just getting in tip-top shape, you know, running the floor, making sure I can defend. Because, you know, everybody's talented at the next level, so just being able to defend on the ball. Of course, everybody is very talented. I mean, we all got drafted for a reason. Like, So I feel like it's going to be a great year for us. I hope she has a great year. Yeah. The Fever have a great year. I'll tell you what, I want a big Ocho sandwich I now.
Yeah, it's I'm huge. Hungry. Yeah, that is great. I, you know what? I think SA Live should have the big Ocho sandwich. <laughs> I think they should. That'd right be a there. great segment for yeah. for Jenna they could have, Sona. You know, Liao on there too, but the the big Ocho needs to be on there. Exactly. Uh, That'd be a fun segment. Here's Fiona oh. and Jen. Yeah, can you plan that for us, Steven? Yeah, Maybe send on one on for that. us, yeah. book it? Yeah. yeah. All right, sounds good. <laughs> oh, we are serving up some cheese today. You know, this show is cheesy, but today it is extra cheesy because you're going to get to find out who is the Mac Daddy of mm. all mac and cheese, yes, right? Love that. Yes, Ben Del Santos, owner of Ben Cheese Munch, is here to give us a preview of the Mac and Cheese Fest happening this weekend, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we're going to be doing some really neat stuff at the at the festival and uh, we have stuff at the restaurant right there is the uh, five cheese mac and cheese that we serve and uh, we're getting ready to take it up a couple of levels, so All right, it's going to be some good stuff coming that. up. That yeah. looks amazing. Yeah, so we want to know, how do you like to top your mac and cheese? What is your number one that you throw on there? Let us know mm -hmm. at SA Live KSAT on Thank Facebook you. and Twitter, and you may see those answers in the show. You're making me very hungry. <laughs> All right, grab your dancing shoes and cowboy hat. Grammy-winning winning musicians are putting on a free Conjunto Underground concert. We have all the details, and we'll even get a sneak peek. Coming up on SA Live, Costa Pacifica over here on 1604. Giant seafood tostadas, huge cocktails, all to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Oh, and get ready because Disney on Ice is coming to town and we've got your preview today. It's all going to be at the Alamo Dome. We've got one of the famous characters mm -hmm. here as well. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. All right, low 80s for the high temperature this afternoon. We're going to have a mixture of sun and clouds out there. This morning we were down to 57 degrees, but tomorrow morning, 66. So you're not going to need the jacket tomorrow morning like you might have needed this morning. 87 for the high Thursday. Friday will be near 90. You'll notice the windier conditions tomorrow and Friday with gusts up to 25 to 30 miles per hour from the southeast. An off chance for a storm over the weekend. Uh, but we'll be keeping an eye on things, keeping you updated. No substantial chances for rain over the next seven days. Unfortunately, we need even more rain than we got earlier this week. David Lee. All right, Sarah, thank you. And thank you all for watching today. I don't know that I would ever call SA Live cheesy. I don't think I would either. I wouldn't. Just, just the right amount of it's cheese. It's just pure fun. SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, an easy spring meal for the entire family, less than five ingredients. We'll show you how to make this. You want to celebrate Cinco de Mayo in a really big way. Tostadas, these drinks, it really takes two hands to handle. Going to show you where you can find it. Live music, lots of great things on the menu. And Disney on Ice Dream Big is coming to the Alamo Dome. We've got one of the characters here for a preview. It's all today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, hello and happy Wednesday. And you know, David Sears is right. <laughs> you know, SA Live is just kind of that perfect amount of yes. cheese. It is the yes. Goldilocks. <laughs> of cheese on out. this show. <laughs> <laughs> so listen up, cheese lovers. You have a chance to taste some of the best mac and cheese in town mm -hmm. and vote for your favorite. We are gonna tell you how. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorsiza. <laughs> I'm Ben <laughs> Tobias Vesky, filling in for Mike Ozdehage. Yes, we're talking about one of the favorite comfort foods, mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. What do you like to top it with? Do you have something? Brisket. Oh, yeah. you oh wow, I didn't even think. You can't go, I know. <laughs> wrong with brisket. I've had that before. That's amazing. That's one of my what about go-tos. That's one of my go-tos. I'd say brisket. Yeah, brisket. and I like to pair it, of course, with anything. Any yes. kind of protein. Yes, I'll take <laughs> mac and cheese anytime, but that's what we want to know from you. What do you like to top your mac and cheese with? Yeah, let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you'll make us hungrier as, <laughs> as you tell Always us, and we yes. see that later in the show. All right, well, like we mentioned earlier, local restaurants are competing this weekend to see who is the mac daddy of mac and cheese and down, and the best part, you can try them all and vote for your favorite. You're welcome. <laughs> Looks amazing. One of those competitors, Ben De Los Santos, owner of Benji's Munch, is here, and you're going to give us a preview of the absolutely, Mac absolutely. And Fest. All yes. Right. Um, so it's this Saturday, uh, I think from 11 to 4. So mm -hmm. just a lot of different macaron macaroni and cheese variety is going to be out there. So some really good choices. So we're uh, doing uh, a mac and cheese right here. So we're, we have pasta. Just going to drop it right in there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start one here. Go on. Get it going. And you guys are, of course, known for your mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Amongst they keep other, asking me to do mac and cheese. Amongst other things, right? Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of different things we do. Yeah. So uh, the burgers, the barbacoa, mm -hmm. 
Just a lot of different stuff. Okay. So, you're good, you're good. That's all we're gonna so get. So you're just gonna let that sit in there, and I think we're about ready. So it doesn't take long, Just to, it's mm -hmm. already par-cooked, so it's just gonna come from there, where it's gonna go straight into the pan. Okay. Let's turn this on. Okay. okay. So you said there's about 15 other restaurants, right? Yeah, all I think so. Um, there's a good number of restaurants. Here you go. We're gonna go over with that, and you're gonna go right to the pan. Okay, you're gonna come with me. Careful. That's okay, you got it. Teamwork, right? Yeah, I got it, good job. There okay, go. and just let it get, it's gonna get nice and hot in there. Okay. And all so, right. How many cheeses are in the there's, cheese? There's this, our, we, so we make a base and we do mm -hmm. a lot of different things with our cheese, with our macaroni and cheese. Mm -hmm. So um, the one we're doing for the festival is a uh, porchetta with a chimichurri. And uh, here you go, you can put that across so it doesn't yep, go yep, all over. Thank you. Um, so porchetta with chimichurri, and that's a really one of our more popular ones. Uh, we're doing, we, at the restaurant we do bacon mac and cheese, which is called mac and swine, mm. which is really nice. And then we do a regular mac and cheese. There you go, it's gonna get nice and melty in there. What's the key to the perfect mac and cheese, would you say? Uh, I think it's just the creaminess. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes they get a little dry and it's just kind of, mm -hmm. it's like off-putting, but uh, you want it to be as, as creamy as possible. So ours has American cheese, cheddar cheese, jack cheese, uh, mozzarella, and provolone. And oh. the mozzarella and provolone does a really nice job of giving it that stretchy pull kind of thing. That's so the that's, best what, part. You, that's yes, what you want. That's what you want. Yeah. Part. And the noodles, so, I noticed they're like the thicker, they're, right? And, our, like and, and with the macaroni, it actually the holes will actually absorb the sauce inside of it. Yes. So when you, when you bite them, they get the little pop of uh, cheese popping out mm. of them. And ours have bridges, so it holds onto that cheese sauce really nice. It's like the pop rocks okay. in mac so, and cheese. So you're gonna put some of that bacon in there because we're doing a bacon mac and cheese for this one. Okay. Yeah. There you go. A little bit more. A little bit more. That's good. Okay. Right there. Perfect. Drop it all in there. Just stir it up a little bit. Okay getting nice and creamy. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. Okay, and then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put it in the, the pan right there, and then we're gonna top it off with some more. Go, Fiona, go. Go, 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 sir. Yes, yes! <laughs> okay. Good job, that's very nice. All right, All right. I'm gonna turn this. Got that. And then uh, and some then the bacon rest on top. Right on top. Okay. And then a little bit of the other cheese just sprinkles right on top of that, too. And I'll take this. There we go. All right, I think we're good. Right, and yeah, and that's this mac and swine that we have at the restaurant. Okay. So that's, so that's, that's one of the popular ones, yeah, right? It, it's not melted on top, but typically when you get it at the restaurant, we have the broiler and it gets nice and oh, melty. Okay, so it, it looks really, so really pretty. All okay? right, so now so we're, we'll make... Now we're doing the next one. Okay. And we're going to be doing, just drop it in again. Let's see if I got better at Good this. Good job. You're doing better, yes. <laughs> I'm just going to so cool sweet. this off. Yeah, yeah okay. So so while, while that's going in, tell us a little bit about the festival, you know, that's the, about to happen. The festival is actually just a group of, uh, uh, it's like a pop-up, but um, they're having a competition for the best mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different uh, restaurants that are, are vying for this uh, title, uh, yeah. best mac and cheese. So people get to vote, they drop in coins in the little buckets and they get to taste every one of them. So you can get a sample of each one. And then let's turn this back on. Oh, yep. Sounds mm -hmm. like a dream. Get to sample mm -hmm. all. Yeah, of you get, so you can just mac and cheese yourself to death and just go like crazy <laughs> I'm with on mac it. and cheese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good one, Fiona. All right. Okay, so a little bit of this, and then yeah. we're gonna get some sauce in there. Okay, I'll use our right. bowl again. Good job. Good what's job. Your, and what's your favorite kind of cheese? I already asked you. Mac and cheese. Oh, my favorite cheese. Gouda. Gouda. I'm a Gouda guy. Yeah. <laughs> Love Gouda. Gouda. Absolutely. Yeah. Gouda. Oh yeah, that's nice. I like that. <laughs> okay. And then we'll there you go. Mix. Mm -hmm. Stir it up, and you added this one too, right? Yes, but beautiful. I can put more. You can put more. Yeah, there's not, never, <laughs> never not? not enough cheese. We yeah. always want more cheese. So tell people where you're located if they want to go sample so your food. So we have a restaurant uh, called Benji's Munch at Bitters and Blanco, mm -hmm. um, right inside 1604. Some really uh, 1218 West Bitters is our is our actual address. Okay. And we do a lot of different things. So we do the mac and cheese, we do burgers, we do uh <laughs> Do you see that burger? Hold a lot of, a lot of grilled cheeses, yeah, burgers, barbacoa, mm. uh, a lot of things to choose from at the restaurant. So, I'm going to turn that off. Okay, I'm going to okay. Fiona take And this. you have other kind of food festivals coming up. Yeah, we do. Um, we've got uh, the uh, Grilled Cheese Festival, which we're kind of known for. We've mm -hmm. won that Grilled Cheese Festival each time it's happened. So wow. uh, it's a spinach and artichoke grilled cheese. Good job, oh. Fiona. You're making the porchetta <laughs> with the chimichurri. So load it up with porchetta mm. and then chimichurri right on top of that. So um, yes, the Grilled Cheese Festival is coming up in, uh, I think, the October, November. I think it's November 12th. Lots of great events. And uh, some really neat stuff happening there. We also participate in Restaurant Week and uh, with Culinaria. Mm -hmm. So we try to support mm -hmm. that. Some really good things going on. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's a really good one right there. And that's what we'll be doing at the, the festival.
And now are you always coming up with just different recipes and having fun? We've had, uh, since we've, we've had the food truck for over seven years mm -hmm. and we've run <laughs> 250, close to 300 different items on the food truck wow. uh, since we've been open. So a lot of different things we just get creative and we'll just throw different types of grilled cheeses. We're kind of known to make different short rib grilled cheese or yes. uh, just all kinds of stuff. So and there's keto a, options you mentioned too. Absolutely. Oh, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're, that's, that's, this, is, this is gonna win. <laughs> I know. Anybody else who's showing up is competing for second place. I know, I know, I know. Okay. Just I, I like the way you roll, but I'm not, I'm not gonna take that yet. Uh, I'm gonna get, let, them, let them sample it. We'll go from there. All right. Yeah, a lot of keto stuff, a lot of gluten free stuff at the restaurant. So a lot of good menu items All that you can right. choose from. And you can get that sample right at the Mac and Cheese Fest. Don't forget, it is this Saturday, April 30th, from noon to 3 p.m. at St. Paul Square. Tickets are going pretty fast, right? And you don't want to wait to miss your chance. I mean, all that mac and cheese, right? Absolutely. Now. All right, for more information on the Mac and Cheese Fest and Benji's Munch, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the Yes scene on SA Live tab. That's it. Okay, yeah. Just making sure. All right. Well, Cinco de Mayo is a little more than a week away, and if you're looking for a place to celebrate, there's one place in town that will have it. Mmm, great food, some drink specials, maybe some live music. Our Mike Oster Hage checks it out. Fiesta just ended and now it is time to start thinking about Cinco de Mayo and what a place to celebrate but out here at Costa Pacifica and Denise Cabello is talking about some really great drink specials, food specials you have going on. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. this thing, <laughs> good lord. Well, you're a busy man. You need to relax with a good drink and talk about a good drink. Good. Good size. <laughs> How? This, this will uh, definitely make your day. This is uh, Costa Pacifica's a cantarito, okay? So come here with an empty belly because uh, you'll be full after this and you'll be feeling good. Yes, yeah. you will. Yeah. So. Okay, so you ready to go? Mike's just going to be a bartender, I, sure. but I'll tell you a little bit about what we do for okay. a cantarito. So you're going to get four um, ounces of tequila. You're going to get four three, ounces of four. Grand Marnay as well. Uh, with Mike's behind the bar, you may get a little bit more. That's okay. You'll also, I'm a good bartender. <laughs> that's what I call a good bartender. You get four ounces. Four ounces of lime and four ounces of orange juice four, as well. Approximately. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're gonna top it off with some grapefruit soda. I love grapefruit soda. It's gonna I get know. all that carbonation, mix it all up. You top it off with that. You can see our uh, our cantaritos already rimmed with some tahin, but let's top it off with a straw. You've got your chamoy straw, and you can garnish with some lime, some oranges. I mean, that's just all the citrus and the si all the things. The size of this thing, there. you just gotta put the whole lime and the whole orange in there, basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so that'll put lime exactly. Too, and yeah, it may be a couple pounds, so you get a workout as well, right? Okay. Win win. <laughs> That's her story and she's sticking to it. Yeah. Okay, you need something to snack on with this and as mm -hmm. as big and over the top as this is, this tostada, oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. What do you so, call that? Drink responsibly because you're gonna you're gonna feel good after this. So why don't we get Ooh. some food mm -hmm. in our belly as well? We're okay. gonna make the loca tostada and it's called the loca tostada because it's really any seafood you can imagine all on one tostada. Okay, what? so we're gonna start off with our base. This is our tostada, our mm -hmm. corn uh, tortilla. Then we're gonna top it with some mayonnaise first. Just lay the base down a little bit. Yours will look prettier when you come to Costa Pacifica. I'm going a little bit fast, okay? So don't mind it, me. It all eats the same, <laughs> exactly. so. Exactly. Now, we're, as far as specials, while you're uh -huh, making that, uh -huh. this, which is gonna be half off, double, triple, quadruple the size, but then half off. That's a bargain any day. That's right, so we have tons of uh, specials for you on Cinco de Mayo. So mm -hmm. you can get your tequila shots on special when you come visit us. You can okay. get your margaritas on special as well. And then enjoy a cantarito because you're going to really enjoy it with your uh, tostada as well. This is just like a ceviche piled on a tostada. Well, we started with ceviche. We have tuna. This is crab here. We're going to top off some shrimp. We're going octopus next all on top of your tostada and then we're going to garnish it with some vegetables some of our aioli and uh, uh some of the house-made sauces here at costa pacifica your again yours is going to look uh, a little bit better than this one but we just wanted to show you i mean that's that's going to fill you up that's all you need 
I'm still <laughs> wondering how you're supposed to tackle that. Um, let's say both hands. Okay. <laughs> Try but, both hands. But both hands are going to be occupied with this uh, thing, so I you know. definitely have to take turns. So bring so. friends to uh, Costa Pacifica on Cinco de Mayo. We have live music. We have mariachis. We've got karaoke. It's going to be a really fun time. All right, 1604. On the inside of 1604, just east of Blanco. So you can go around, make the loop, That's and all right. that stuff. Tucked right in here, live music, big old drinks, tostadas, <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah, I'll see you here. Okay, happy Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> and for more information on Costa Pacifica, of course, go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Salud. Cheers. Salud. Mm -hmm. Five ingredients, one impressive recipe sure to please the entire family. But first, your favorite Disney characters are coming to life where you can see them live here in the Alamo City. And we chat with one of the stars. That's next.